Hey, Doug, you ready for the show today, buddy? Whoa, hey, must have fallen asleep. Fallen asleep? What are you doing exactly over there? I mean, what am I doing? There's a line of white powder. It's magic powder. Oh, magic powder. Shaving novelties. I mean, these guys are trying to compete with Gillette. They really didn't bring much to the table. No, they weren't even really trying. It's like you gotta sex it up and sell it, not like have an afterthought uh, sales point. They were at the kiddies table, basically. They were at the, I don't know what that means. What is the kiddies table? Did you have a family growing up? No, I didn't even have a cat. <laughs> okay. Well, anyway, so these companies couldn't make it the big game uh, double-edged razor shaving sales. So they came up with different ways to kind of compete all their kind of Oh. Gimmicky. Yeah. Awkward. Yeah. I'd have to say they're pretty gimmicky and awkward. Let's talk about some of these. Well, I mean, the first one that comes to mind is Cutie. Um, I mean, I we see these, maybe we've been out antiquing and you've seen one of these. These are ladies' razors, and they're often asked, are oh they real? Oh my goodness. Are they real? And they are. I mean, there's actual little, tiny, double-edged razor blades. Check this out. Oh, wow. That is a Cutie. Have you seen that? Isn't that so cute? Ooh, got your nose. Got your nose. You must have had a family. <laughs> they paid far too much attention to me. So, I mean, these this was like a ladies' razor where obviously you have to be uh, trying to sell the gimmick of a small, dainty razor because this is like a doll would use this. I mean, well, I mean, yeah, that's exactly what that is. Cause a, a lady typically today prefer a longer handle and right. like to cover more surface area. Yeah, this uh, would be ridiculous for pits and parts. Well, clearly they were shaving other things back then. Like it wasn't as. You know, they, as it is today. Well, it started off with armpits. Don't, you know, okay. be ladylike. Don't be like those European women. And they would always show, like, European women on the beach in their smoking. arms up. Yeah, smoking and have hairy armpits. And then they'd be like, cutie. <laughs> you know, you just sit there for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hair by hair. Yeah. But, I mean, that's pretty ridiculous. This is another one that uh, I have I picked up years ago. It's called a fold -a brush So, as if a shaving brush is too big to travel with, you have a folding shave brush that would actually segment oh that is awesome a badger brush into four different areas that oh, would fold look at up that. now this would fit in any cigarette pack right in fact that's what it doubled as in a british kind of way moving on we now can look at <laughs> the king of all novelty raises at the time and i think to this day is actually called the King. The King Oscillating Razor. Oscillating Razor. Check this baby out. This is, I mean, it does look very steampunk, doesn't it? It is pretty steampunkish. What this proposed, to, or what this stated it would do is oscillate while right. you shaved. You actually, the connection right here? Yep. Would turn these wheels, which would cause the blade to oscillate. Now I've read in many a forum that it, it took special blades, which it did take special blades. Now at the time, Special blades were the only ones that you could use that would oscillate, but you can use a modern blade these days because they're thinner. That's a Paul Silver. Yeah, Paul Silver. But, uh... Now, if you notice... It's got, like, a reciprocating action. Yeah, and so it oscillates like a fan. The and shave so, that clicks. And it actually does work I actually it, on parts of your face. It definitely worked my neck when I was using it, but whether it oscillates or not, it is a great shaver. I actually really do enjoy this. Um, and, yeah, this is a great... Um, Great uh, razor still intact here. Timepiece on all. this. This is probably 1932, and it ran till about 49, I think. 1949. Yeah. yeah. And uh, gold plated, right. as you can see. Uh, the advertising included uh, the phrase "the shave that clicks" because yeah. it clicked for a royal shave. Yeah, or for a royal shave. Um, and again, this is a fine example I have right here. I really like the condition of the case. The case is actually really cool. Yeah. Look at that too. But, you know, and it wasn't really unique for the time. There were other oscillating razors. You know, there was something you would wound up, some that you would look very slim to this with the knobs on top. Um, but, so, I mean, at the time, it was a, a selling novelty. Right. It just so happens they made enough that the King oscillating razor is still in, in circulation for the most part. Hmm. Yeah, it's an excellent find. Um, and honestly, it was created by J.L. King, right. which confused me. We talked about this on the phone. It's like, is J.L. King the same King that helped uh, King, King Gillette? Yeah. 
with his blade project. He was trying to find the best way to produce blades, and there was one engineer that worked on the machines, and I know his last name was King. Yeah. Turns out it was Leech King. So I don't know what the L stands for in this name, but I wouldn't be, I, I don't know. Maybe there's a the connection. If you know, please let us know. In the comments, in the comments below. Comments. But yeah, it was discontinued around 1949. I think it was exactly 1949. What else we got, man? Well, another one that um, a lot of people ask about or looking for is this Eclipse Red Ring. So this was made by the James Neal and Company out of Sheffield Steelworks. Uh, these guys were making all sorts of other things using you know, magnets and tools. Magnets were their big thing, yeah. Yeah. So kind of the novelty on this guy is that, and I actually really like this feature. You, you drop the blade on the counter and you can't get it up. So it has a magnet in the little handle. You can actually pick up the razor blade, which I think is really helpful for loading a blade. I think it's kind of silly, but and a novelty to be. <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> for sure. But it, even uh, the guard itself—they called it the Eclipse um, because it was you know, named after like a, a famous horse, basically. Yeah, it was a special horse owned by one of the sons of King George II, mm. Duke of Cumberland. Interesting. I think so. So it actually. And he was born during a solar eclipse. Well, that's probably why they call him Eclipse. <laughs> that's exactly why they call him Eclipse. <laughs> But it does feature a little eclipse here on the top, and this is a very 1930s, very Art Deco. It does have another really novel thing about it. it has kind of a legendary guard that's kind of a hybrid. First time you really see this play out where it looks like a uh, open comb, but it does have a connecting uh, bar underneath to keep it together. So you see that almost evolve, in my opinion, into like what you, you know, like Mercur or whatever today has like a scalloped kind of guard. Yeah. I kind of feel like... But it's, it's never really been fully explored again. I really like this. I think, you know, you would think that more razors would be borrowing this this hybrid feature. Right. Um, and did you mention it's chrome plated, which is kind of rare yeah. at the time? Yeah. Chrome, chrome was not something, I mean, nickel and silver and gold were a lot more common. Uh, but yeah, chrome. And then it does also do the same adjustment feature. They talked about it like the Gillette single rings. Right. Where you can basically put a blade in and start loosening the handle and you're gonna kind of just get more exposure. And it will, or should, click. Mine, I swear, me and Matt were talking about this earlier, uh, it did click. Last yeah. week when I was using it, it would make a click sound. But there's a little arrow right there you can see in these little lines that you line up to uh, change the, well, the aggressiveness of the, the razor, so or the you, blade gap, for the most part. If you have an Eclipse red ring and yours clicks, please let us know because Because Matt doesn't believe me that it clicks. I don't believe him. <laughs> I've seen a lot of these over the years. Mine doesn't click. His won't click on set. Maybe it has performance anxiety. Um, <laughs> so what other novelties are there out there uh, for razors, Doug? Well, we have some, you know, you had your cutie and I have mine. This is a, this is a Mercur mustache razor, which is, uh, well, it's yeah, you got very, two of them. It's, I do, but one is actually a Besser. Ah. Do you remember this? I talk about this on every show that I'm on. You are. Yeah. You do. I am and I do. Uh, I am what I am. But this is the original, I think, or maybe this is the original. Besser in German means better. So they might have been mocking Mercur. I'm not sure which one came first, honestly. And I will tell you, if you can find vintage Besser blades, they're better than the modern Mercur blades. Because the modern Mercur blades in the assembly line they're made in, they're hand snapped out of the sheets. So they're dulling the tips of the blades, mm. but they have no competition. They're the only, you know, the only game yeah, in town. Yeah, you can't find any other blades like that. So they're not interested in, in making them any sharper. Whereas the Besser, if you, t if you buy these, they're still sharper than the Mercur. I'm now telling this you. was meant for trimming all these little areas, yeah. like the corner of your lip, or and it's double edged, so you can use right both here. sides here. And this one's a little bigger. So all this like mustache and beard shaping. I've used it. Uh, it's you know it's a supplemental razor during your shave if you really right. want to do some detail work in there. Is it? Do you need it? No, but it is cool and it's a piece of history. Uh, so novelty, I'd say. Speaking of a piece, <laughs> then there's this guy. This has been on my desk forever, and it literally is called the yawn mower. It looks like a little push lawn mower, and it can actually accept a cartridge uh, onto it. A cartridge. Like an yeah, like an Atra. Um, or yeah, one of those tracks or something. It's gonna take a cartridge, but I can't even imagine using this. This is ridiculous. It is certainly ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> so other novelty themes outside the razor realm also fall into the aftershave area. Yes, I thought you were gonna say afterlife. <laughs> Second life. Right. Second life, so to speak. I mean, Avon decanters have really made a comeback these days, and you know, some of my favorite ones are displayed right here. Uh, I Old only Teddy. Have, yeah, this, I mean, come on. The Teddy Roosevelt. Uh, what these, does it smell like? I have to smell Well, this one is actually, you know, each one, a lot of these decanters took different scents. Okay. They weren't specialized. And on the bottom, you would have what scent was in it. 
This is wild country. Um, in fact, if you're collecting, this is what you want to find. You want to still have the sticker on the bottom. You would preferably like to have some uh, apple shape still in it, but if you don't, it's fine as long as the sticker's on the bottom, and you also want to look for the box in good condition. So. We'll I know some collectors out there that this is like their big thing. They want to collect all the Avon decanters. Yeah. yeah. And then here's the George Washington. This is from the Bicentennial release. I believe it happened in 1976. Being bicentennial. That doesn't smell yeah. too bad. I mean, it makes me kind of want to go out big game hunting. You should. Here's another decanter that's also novelty. Now, Avon was really known for this. This is the Potbelly Stove. And this is, oh, this is Excalibur. Okay. There you go. Like the sword. Excalibur. Yes. Smell that. Like the that's quest. the Potbelly. Now, interestingly enough, at the same time Avon was doing this, you also had Amway doing the same thing. Like like the Amway? The Amway, like the pyramid scheme Amway. They actually were pretty cutting edge with their own decanters, and it turns out they did it first. That's right, Amway so it was a had the- gimmick from them. It was the gimmick from Amway, and the same thing goes with Go Amway figure. collectibles. You want the sticker below, but Amway was doing it first. So here are just a few um, to look at I mean, when it comes to decanters. We have the globe, now we have something Someone that beat them all. This isn't really a decanter though, but it is pretty much novelty. This is the from 1951. It's called Tingle. And if you look at this, this is really, I mean, for 1951, this is so racy. It is very, very racy. This is more anatomically correct than Barbie. <laughs> I think the nipples are pierced even. Yeah, you could cut glass with that. Wow. But yeah, so this is Tingle. Another classic. It does contain menthol. If you, can pick, like. if you can find that, good luck. But, uh, so novelty items, and one of my favorite, you know, in fact, if I could uh, recommend any of Avon's scents, I say go for Bravo. This is what Austin Powers would wear. Yeah, baby. Yeah. Smell this, man. How would, how do you know that's what Austin Powers wear? Just the packaging? Yeah, the packaging. Okay. But this is a classic. One of my favorites. That and uh, Clint. It almost smells feminine, though. Is this a man's? Thing? It is a man. Okay. You know, and this very is very floral. One. This is their Bay Rum, which I think is a really cool bottle, almost like a seasoning bottle. And it's actually right here says California Perfume Company. Okay. And that's actually what Avon was originally called. Mm. Yeah, Avon was created in about 1886 by David H. McConnell. He was a book salesman, and he would uh, pass out little samples or little vials with his books when he went door to door. And he noticed that he was getting a lot of attention doing this. Uh, so much so that he dropped the book selling and started selling colognes and aftershaves and had women selling them door to door. And uh, yeah, and eventually changed the name to, uh, from California Perfume Company to Avon, which was based on a popular scent at the time called Avon. Um, now, when did it turn into like the women's door to door makeup stuff? Uh, well, as soon as he realized that the vials were catching on, that people were more interested, interested in the perfume and the aftershaves than right. the books. So he started making aftershaves. That's and really good. Kind of yeah. Like a mild bay rum. And I just think it's funny that he put California Perfume Company on here, on the bay rums. And when I first received this, I was like, oh, I guess they outsourced this to some special perfume company. That was the actual name. It's the actual name. So it was a throwback. So, um, yeah, that's it, folks. I mean, that's all I got. <laughs> Shaving novelties. Magic powder. Oh, it's magic powder time. It was magic powder time earlier when I came on to set. Certainly was magic. I actually feel it working. <laughs> so what exactly is it? I mean, I've seen this in the department stores, grocery stores. It is shaving powder. It's so close. And for those of you out there who know what Nair is, it's the male equivalent. And this is marketed to, uh, particularly to uh, African American men. Okay. Yeah, because they suffer from, uh, well, more, more so than uh, the Caucasian type uh, from ingrown hairs. Right, curly so they, hair. Yes, they really market this to uh, that audience. And it's some sketchy stuff. Uh, <laughs> not a sponsor, but I think we're not for ingestion need, either. No, not at all. We're, we're pretty much gonna need to try this. It's gonna burn the hair off us, folks, and we're gonna enjoy every second of it. Fight Club. This is a chemical burn. Ah, ah, ah. Yep, challenge time. Okay, so you're all probably wondering what the hell I'm doing with my fist out like this. I'm not. <laughs> We are going to pull a fight club sort of thing. We're yep. going to see who can last the longest with some magic powder on their arm hair. Yep. Oh, that is more than enough. Oh. And uh, we just we want to, this is going to leave a hair hole on the back of my 
I have a cut right But we're doing this for you, for the most part. This is for the sake of science. And I know we've all passed by this in Sally's, because we all go to Sally's. I go to Sally's. Okay, good. And um, often wonder what it is. In fact, one of these tins, that one over there, the gray one, I bought probably a few years ago to put on my shaving shrine. Something I would never use, but just look and wonder. I kind of like what's behind us. Well, wonder no more, folks. Never seen that before. So. We are going to uh, see who lasts the longest in the spirit of Fight Club. Set the timer. And we're doing this for you guys, the viewers. We would have never have thought of doing this ourselves. Though we did think of doing this ourselves. To ourselves. Yeah. For yourselves. We thought about putting it on our face. Matt, in a drunken haze. <laughs> he doesn't remember. He didn't remember before the show. Now he's suddenly remembering that he did want to do this on his face. And I have to remind Doug. Doug. I was drunk. I was drunk, and we I, drunk. you know, we do a lot of videos here. Big Shave West is coming up. And drinking. I don't want to, if it, if it goes horribly wrong, I don't want like a chemical burn all over my face. He didn't bring any of this up at the meeting. Regardless. So. It's working. It says since 1901. You feel tingling, or what do you feel? I feel tingling, but not there. Do not use after prolonged sun exposure. So like, you, it's okay with your daughter, but not your son. <laughs> Only to be used to remove facial hair. Well, shit. <laughs> you know, while we're killing time here, or ourselves, I thought I would bring Skin up, cells. you know, typically brain cells. Um, you know, I'd recommend a book at the end of every episode. I'd like to recommend an Avon Collector's Encyclopedia, folks. If you were interested in this, I know I kind of rushed through this. I actually have the book. You have the book? Yeah. You do? I do. Oh. My book file. Well, turns out Matt has the book, and I should be displaying it right now with my good hands. But uh, it's Avon Collector's Encyclopedia, the 18th edition, uh, printed, I believe it's 2007? Yeah, sounds about right. Excellent book, folks, when it comes to decanters and their history. As for Amway, if you have any more information on Amway, please leave it in the comments below. Or if you'd like to join Amway, let me know. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a new pair of shoes. <laughs> and I also want to mention while you're watching this, if you'd like to enter this week's giveaway, just comment below. Yeah. You can comment and get involved with today's topic. Tell us how ridiculous this just is. Just comment to comment to enter the giveaway. Or if you've used magic shaving powder and you had positive results, We'd like to know if this is something people actually turn to. Okay, I think, are we done? No, I think it's been about five. Uh, it's been four minutes, but you don't have to talk the entire time. <laughs> no, we, we do. We can speed through. Actually, mine's starting to burn. Is it? Are you feeling a little tingle? Mm -hmm. Now I am. <laughs> now I am. <laughs> tingle, tingle, tingle. That's so wrong. Resume fast forward. Yes. Okay, I'm, I'm definitely... Oh, I'm definitely feeling a burn. Well, um, if you quit, then Doug wins. I'm not saying I'm quitting. I'm just saying it is it is burning. <laughs> bully, bully this. <laughs> Douglas, as always, is a loser. I'm joking. I'm completely joking. But really, it's been how long now? It's been like almost 12 minutes, I think. I'm kind of really just more or less, I mean, does it burn a little bit? Yeah, but like, is it unbearable? No. no. In fact, it's quite comfortable. No. It's almost like I feel it working. <laughs> I can feel it working all right. But let's see if it actually works. I'm wondering if my- There are no winners. There are no losers here today. Let's do this. There's only the first layer of skin that you lose. Ready? Yeah. 
I won! I wiped it off first. Oh sh! <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> that really, really, really. Oh my god! Took off a lot of hair. I hope it grows back. It's right in the middle. Of my and it's like singed. If you look at it, can you see that? Oh yeah! It's like. Singed. Oh god! It smells like burned hair. Which smells like chicken. Is there another moist towel out there? Is there any chicken? Oh, thank you. Well, there you have it, folks. It certainly does work. Oh, yeah. We'll nice. get back on the whole cancer thing, but, uh, yeah, look at that. It singed it. It's like lighting a cigar that's too short and sporting it, a stash. It smells like you were trying to oh light. Oh, my God. Yeah, like you were trying to light a cigar and you accidentally. Why did we do this? Your, because it's a look challenge. At us. We look ridiculous. This is like... This has been another episode of I'd Lather Be Shaving. That's what it's been. Join us next week, folks. Another stupid episode of I'd Lather Be Shaving. This is what we do for you guys. It certainly does smell like chicken. It doesn't smell good at all. Please like, subscribe, comment below. Provide some aloe or soothing lotion for <laughs> burning hands. And possibly win a shave soap and apple shave by simply commenting below. Yes, and this won't be one of the things. Until next time, folks. Oh, us. <laughs> I'd rather be shaving. Ciao.